Triangle Strategy, as you know, is developed by Square Enix, but it's also worked on by Artdink, a studio from Japan which was founded in 1986. That might not ring a bell, but they worked on a very famous strategy game that was published by Maxis known as A-Train. There have been other releases, but by far this collaboration with Square Enix is the biggest to date. And with Asano, producer of Bravely Default, behind the wheel, there are many who have purchased and pre-ordered this game well in advance of any review. Let me tell you right off the bat, you made a fantastic choice. A thanks to Square and Nintendo for the review copy. Is Triangle Strategy going to reach the pinnacle of this genre mountain or struggle scaling it and end up wrecked? Angle. Ouch. Let's find out. Without spoilers, the narrative of Triangle Strategy is centered around the kingdoms of Nazalia, the three of whom make up the titular triangle, Estfrost, Hyzant, and Glenbrook, with the main protagonist Serenoa being a part of the latter. He is heir to House Wolfort, one of the three high houses of Glenbrook, and best friend of Roland, the prince of the region. Throughout the storyline, there are a number of major choices that you'll need to make, using what's known as the scales of conviction. These choices range from destinations to vastly important story-changing decisions decisions. It's up to you to try and influence those in your group to the choice that you wish them to make. To do this, you might have to wander around the local area getting extra information about the two, three or even four choices available, all the while gauging the information you receive to try and help you make the decision yourself. You can then go back and reason with your group, making several choices to try and convince them based on the characters that you've come to know. It's not simply a case of choosing the option that's unlocked from the dialogues that you've been on. You genuinely have to think about this character how they've been built up over the game and which persuasive statement they're most likely to respond to. Initially, it felt like a system that was just there to decorate an arbitrary choice, but as I progressed through the game, I found that I was able to choose the right responses much more accurately to persuade my group because the storyline had done such a good job of crafting solid and specific characters for each and every one of them. Triangle Strategy is a story behemoth with multiple branching choices, whereas a lot of RPG stories focus on one key theme or idea, the triangle almost feels like a metaphor for the lore of these three kingdoms which is weaved throughout the entire game. There are at least three or four moments where these narrative strings come together to form a real eureka moment. For some, the level of storytelling might feel a bit too much, particularly in the earlier parts of the game. You'll be sitting through more dialogue than you will combat. On the contrary though, by the time I fought my first battle, I felt like I had a good understanding of who these people were and why they were fighting in the first place. With the constant references to the Sultan Wars, which ravaged these three kingdoms, and with this younger generation coming up, forgetting some of the hard-learned lessons of the past, something which in the current climate hit home even harder. Triangle Strategy then isn't a story of right and wrong, and incredibly difficult decisions which operate in grey areas left me painstakingly weighing up the pros and cons. And when 20 hours into the story I found myself faced with the consequences of one of my earlier decisions, I felt genuine remorse. Not something I expected, and really it's incredibly impressive. Throughout the 50 or so hour long campaign, you'll build up a mighty army. There's a specific icon for when a new person wants to join your retinue, and selecting it will bring up a story segment of how they're introduced to you. It gives you a brief origin story almost of where they are and where they've come from. The combat then is tactical turn-based combat reminiscent to many genre classics. With such a large character selection to choose from, you can choose up to 10 for each fight and then place them on the battlefield. You'll want to make considerations for elevation, direction, and obviously enemy position. When battle commences, the game offers you what's known as simulation mode. This allows you to play out moves without playing out moves, so you can see their consequences and the amount of damage they'll do. There are also colour coordinated areas on the floor, so that you can see exactly where and when you'll be within the enemy's reach. A subtle but incredibly important mechanic is that your characters will level up as you play. During combat, they might gain an entirely new ability, but if the fight's too difficult, you can simply retreat and retain all of that experience to fight another day. Combat is 
is expertly balanced and you will rely on every single class in the game. Take the spy Anna with her surmount skill to get up any height who can then throw a poison dagger from behind for critical damage and disappear entirely for two turns. Or Roland with his lance that can pierce two enemies in a straight line. And as the battles rage on, your characters might be engaged in fierce dialogue and further exposition. Now each fight has a set objective. Sometimes this might be to kill one specific person or at others to survive. These set goals change the way that you have to play and your approach to them will also evolve as the game goes on. Personally I found that the archers are a hugely powerful class especially when combined with that elevation. They can be devastating in a fight. Now leveling happens from combat itself and when you have new lower ranked players join your team it can be tempting to leave them on the bench but experience gained is much higher in those latter fights while potentially I would have preferred the experience to just be evenly spread amongst your entire retinue, this is better than nothing. During combat, your players have access to what's known as TP. These TP are represented with a small glowing symbol. These are what allow you to use your special abilities. You won't be relying on magic or any stamina, and at the start of each turn, you gain back one more of these. The controls are so incredibly easy. You can use the bumpers to quickly switch between all of the roster, and the simulation mode is inspired. Until you get your hands on triangle strategy yourself, it's really difficult to articulate why combat feels so different here but to sum it up i think it's the personal touch the feeling that you know these people but also that your decisions could quite literally change the outcome of their lives and mark my words it will if you pull off particularly difficult strategies you'll be rewarded with quietus points this is one extra system which isn't discussed a great deal but back at your encampment you can spend these to unlock permanent skills that can be used once per fight and you'll also be rewarded with medals which are the currency used to upgrade your character this advances their base class and unlocks new abilities. And with every single character having their own skill tree for you to advance as well, using raw materials gained either in the training area or through combat, there's a solid RPG base to the whole game. Finally then, there are a series of investigations. You may have a set piece of information that you're trying to uncover, and you'll need to question the local populace, gradually uncover more clues, and even find hidden journals. Now, you can choose to not do any of that. You could move on and just say you found no evidence, only to find out that it has a massive impact on the storyline. Thankfully, you can save and load at any point, and you may well find yourself going back to try and change the outcomes. But with triangle strategy, nine times out of 10, you'll genuinely be able to. That's not to say that decisions are right or wrong, but once again, my gray might be different to yours. In summary then, story gameplay and controls are all incredible. The narrative delivery may feel a touch long-winded, particularly in the earlier stages, but it's all important for setting the scene for what comes later. The combat is as good as it gets in this genre, and it forces the player to use everything at their disposal. Even with a few moments of just longing for the action, it's still exceptional. Story and gameplay combined score 19 out of 20. You can move the camera freely with the right stick, and the cursor with the left. Controls are really nice, but I think it would have benefited from some form of touchscreen when playing in handheld. Controls also score 19 out of 20. Onto visuals, performance and audio then, and I love the HD 2D art style that Square have opted for in their most recent releases. I was pleased to see though that you can turn off the shallow depth of field which can give the image a slightly blurry look, but overall there are some stunning locations. It's not only the artistic choices and the use of colour, but also some of the animations. Smaller details like the movement of fabrics, or the glistening of a waterfall amidst battle set this one apart. Add in that every single character is voice acted and that composer Akira Senyu actually adapts the music to match what's going on, on screen. Whereas there's no on-screen bar to show the balance of a battle, the orchestrated score will match what's happening. When the situation becomes more dire, then that audio will accompany it. If things are in your favour, then the triumphant orchestrated score will kick in. The situation is grim. It's this and a hundred other small details which make this game stand so far above what it could otherwise have been. There are a few performance issues in some stages. Now in some of the latter areas you'll have up to 30 different players on screen in combat and the frame rates can become a little unstable. In most areas it's fine but I did notice it in one or two. Handheld and text size are all fine although a text size option would have been nice. Overall visuals score 18 out of 20 and the excellent voice acting as well as brilliant orchestrated score, score 20 out of 20. 
Triangle Strategy retails at £49.99 or your regional equivalent. But there is the Tacticians Limited Edition, which is £90. That includes some really nice goodies and a pack of cards as well, and is one I might actually pick up myself. It has a reasonably small download size of 5.8 gigs, but will take up 7 gigs plus any updates that come out for it. After the 50 or so hour long campaign, you will find a new game plus. And I mentioned that there are multiple choices throughout the experience. It's certainly a game that's going to have a great deal of replayability. I'm not allowed to give you any details of what's in that new game plus mode, but suffice to say, Triangle Strategy holds a great deal of value. I give value 19 out of 20. For many, Triangle Strategy is going to come as a bit of a surprise. Surprising that one more game needs to go in the backlog, but my word is this a good game to put in there. With hundreds of branching choices which will directly impact the narrative, multiple endings and a new game plus, I am going to sit down and play the whole thing through again. It gets a switch up score of 95%. Absolutely loved it. Let me know in the comments, is this one you're interested about? That was quite a long review, I hope it wasn't too long, but it's one of those where you, if you're going to spend the money, you want to know absolutely everything. And bar the story, I think I've given you that. Thanks to everyone that supports the channel, particularly the patrons, we've had a few new ones this week. And to all of you guys that comment down below, we try and read like everything. Even if we can't reply to everything, we sit there, spend hours, you know, in the evenings just going through. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!